Hello everyone and we're back with another video um, where I'm going to go over some examples this time from section 6.4 optimization problems part one creating the model there are a couple of problems that I want to go over today number three as well as number five so for number three it deals with a vending machine that sells juice and pop the machine holds at most 240 cans of drinks and sales from the vending machine shows that at least two cans of juice are sold for each can of pop Juice is being sold for a dollar and pop for a dollar twenty-five. The first thing that we need to do is to set up our variables. In this case, I'm gonna go with J for juice and P for pop. We also to determine our domain and range. You will realize that J must be a whole number as well as P. And the reason for that is if you have a fractional um, number of pop or cans of juice, that doesn't really work, and you cannot have negative number uh, of things sold. Next up, we're going to set up our inequalities, now known as constraints. The first constraint we have is that J plus P, which is the total number of drinks, must be less than or equal to 240. And the second constraint that we have is that the number of cans of juice sold must be greater than or equal to two times the number of pops sold. And that's to set aside the second condition that we're given. Finally, we are to write out the objective function that is going to be the revenue is equal to $1 times the number of cans of juice sold plus $1.25 for each can of pop sold. Next up, we're going to graph our inequalities. In order to do that, we must graph the associated equation. So in the first case, we have J plus P is equal to 240. I'm going to let J be the x-axis and P with the y-axis. So in this case, we have a simple case where I can let j equals 0 and get p equals 240 which gives me the point 0 to 40 as well as um, if I let p equals 0 then j is equal to 240 and I get the point 240 and 0 okay so that's the first line 240 240 and I'm going to draw a straight line through and you'll note that it's a solid line because I can have 240 cans of um, in total on to the second line J is equal to 2p it's a different color this line is actually put into can be put into slope intercept form P is equal to 1 half J the slope will be one half and the y intercept is going to be zero. Oh, sorry, the p intercept is going to be zero. And you'll get a line that looks like this. So it has the intercept of zero, it moves up one space and over two. line that looks like this okay. so next up we are to find out the test points in this case we can test a zero zero for the first line but not the second one so let's go ahead and do that test zero zero for the first line and you will see that zero plus zero is indeed less than 240 so I'm going to be coloring in this side of the first line. And for the second line, I'm going to test a point that's not 0, 0. In this case, I'll test 80 and 0. So if I were to do that, um, 0 is not greater than or equal to 2 times 
So actually, for the second line, I'm going to test the point 80 and 0 right here. If I consider my inequality, j is greater than or equal to 2p, I have 80 greater than or equal to 2 times 0, which of course is true as well. So I'll be shading below this line here. And as it turns out, of course, because the sets of the solutions are supposed to be whole numbers, I'll be dotting things in. So I'm go ahead and draw some dots. Again, the quite area is quite small, so you can actually go ahead and dot all of that in. And that's all you need to do for question number three. We'll continue with question number five. It is about a football stadium that has 50,000 seats, two-fifths of which are in the lower deck, three-fifths are in the upper deck, and at least 30,000 tickets are sold per game. Lower deck tickets are $120 each, upper deck tickets are $80 each. So the first thing that you need to do here is figure out how many lower deck and upper deck um, seats there actually are. There are 20,000 lower deck seats and 30,000 upper deck seats. And now you just set up your variables. The first one will be L for lower and U for upper. The domain and range of these variables will once again be whole numbers because you cannot sell part of a ticket. Or negative number of tickets. The constraints. Now, The number of lower deck tickets must be less than or equal to 20,000. Whereas the number of upper deck tickets sold must be less than or equal to 30,000 because that's the number of seats there are. The number of seats in the lower and upper deck in total will be greater than or equal to 30,000 because that's how many tickets are sold per game. And those will be our three constraints. The objective function, which is the revenue once again, will be $120 times the number of lower bow seats sold plus $80 times the number of upper deck tickets sold. We're then to graph each line here. I'm going to let the x-axis be L and the y-axis be U. As we saw in class, L equals 2,000. In this case, it will be a vertical line. Whereas U equals 30,000 will be a horizontal line. And finally, L plus U equals 30,000 will be a slanted line with um, the following two points. If I let L equal 0, then U is equal to 30,000, which gives me the point 0, 30,000. Similarly, if I let U equal 0, then L is equal to 30,000. And I get the point 30,000 and 0. So I'm going to graph all three lines. The vertical line at L equals 20,000. Here we are. The horizontal line at U equals 30,000. And finally, the slanted line, which will go through 0, 30,000, and 30,000, 0. There we are. So now we are to find out which area did we shade. Notice that we can use the test point 0, 0 for all three of these. 
So we'll go ahead and test zero, 0. If I test the first line, L is equal to 0, then 0 is less than 20,000, which is true. So I'll shade to the left of this first line. Second line, 0 is less than or equal to 30,000. So I'll shade below the horizontal line. And finally, 0 plus 0 is not greater than or equal to 30,000. So I'll be shading above this line because 0, 0 is right there. So the only area that we get is this triangle here. And once again, we are going to use dots because the results are to be whole numbers. And your solution will look something like this. And that's all you need to do for number five.